I have the pleasure to introduce Rafael Piazzina. He's a Python maintainer, a Git maintainer, Python developer from Edinburgh, UK, and he's presenting to us uh, what's new in Pyth PyTest 3.0. Give him a warm welcome, please. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your interest in my presentation today. Um, as a very, very short disclaimer, I talk a lot of, about Python 3. Uh, and with this release, with PyTest 3, I often get confused. So if I seem to change like PyTest and Python, um, don't, like, it just happens to me. Um, so don't get confused as well, please. Um, yeah, so you can find me on the internet under my Twitter handle uh, as, as Hackerbrot. Um, I'm on GitHub and Twitter mostly. I tweet about like mostly open source things or PyTest. Um, and on GitHub you will find mostly Python stuff. A bit of Go sometimes and Vim stuff. Um, I'm involved in um, those things. Like PyTest is definitely like the biggest topic for me today. But I will also briefly talk about Cookie Cutter, a project that I'm working on also in my spare time. And I work for a company called FanDuel, and we are based in Edinburgh. Um, we are working in the industry of uh, daily fantasy sports, and we have offices in the UK and in the States, uh, about 400 members across the globe. Um, and I'm actually German. I relocated to the UK half a year ago. And um, if you ever have the chance to relocate to a foreign country, I highly recommend even like, considering it. Uh, I definitely don't regret my decision. Um, the UK is pretty cool, and Scotland in particular. Um, that's where I go for a run on the weekends. Um, if you're into that kind of stuff, I, you should definitely check it out. Um, one of our main initiatives this year is inclusion. So we work at FanDuel um, that everyone, regardless of any, th any factors that make up your, your essence as a human being, be, like, be it race or gender or whatever, we try to give everyone the same opportunities. Um, so if you're interested, please check out our. Yeah, um, so I talked about cookie cutter. It's a command line utility, and I gave a presentation here last year. Um, um, and what it does, it helps you to create projects um, based on templates that others may provide for you, or you may write them yourself. Um, it's agnostic to the programming language, you could use it forever you want to, um, but it's running on, on Python. And we support um, all major operating systems and going from Python 2.7 to 3.5. Um, this is how you use it. You just invoke the executable, pass in a template. As you can see, it's downloading a template from GitHub um, at this point. You answer a bunch of questions. You can either stick to the sensible defaults or put in your own information as highlighted here. Um, we also support choice variables, so you can, uh, like a template author could um, decide that there are uh, just a limited number of um, um, viable options, so you can choose from them. What it does is creates uh, directories and files for you and inserts the information, so that's like a, a setup tools set up, uh, and you can see like it has the information that I've entered. Um, you can find the project at github.com, Audrey R, cookie cutter. Um, just give me an impression of how familiar you are with PyTest. Could you please raise your hands if you've used PyTest before? Okay, that's everyone. That's amazing. <laughs> um, and the next question, are you familiar with how Py uh, PyTest plugins work? Okay, that should be about 50%. That's, that's, that's quite nice, cool. Um, so the reason I'm asking this question is because writing plugins requires you to have some kind of experience with internals of PyTest already. So. Um, I'll see if I can um, go into more detail later on then. Um, so just a brief introduction, PyTest is a testing framework. Um, you probably know all of it, so I'll just skip over it. Um, it's released under the terms of the MIT license, so it's open source. And it's, um, it's not only the core framework, but there's also a lot, a lot of plugins. So the community is quite big, um, and it's ever growing. Uh, you can find it at github.com, pytest-dev, and pytest. And you will find under the organization there are um, some plugins that we maintain as a community, um, and also a template. This is how you install pytest, and this is how you run pytest. And um, I've gone through this experience, and I find it a crazy 
um, confusing that you have to put a dot when you run PyTests. Um, that's causing a lot of confusion for a lot of people who are new to PyTest. Um, so that was my reaction in the beginning. Um, I was just mind blown um, because you import PyTest without the dot, but uh, there is an entry point which doesn't have the dot. But it's all coming from history. So it originated from a library called PyLib. And it had a lot of several, like PyPath, I think, Py, PyLib. Uh, and, and one of those was, was PyTest, at least. Um, and it, the, for, the, for the community that uh, creates this project, um, backwards compatibility is one of the major concerns. So we kept this as it was um, to not break anything for anyone else. But there is hope. <laughs> Soon, with the new release of um, PyTest 3, uh, we support both. So you don't need to put the dot anymore if you don't want to. But um, PyTest will be kept for compatibility reasons again. So nothing will break for you. But if you decide to um, just use one uh, name, you can, you can do so. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> So uh, again, as everyone seems to be familiar with PyTest, um, that's what we do. Um, the examples that I have in my presentation are running on Python 3. There is some like uh, uh, tuple unpacking, which is only available for Python 3, so don't get confused by this. In our example, we will have a command line application. I use click for that. Um, we want to port, support three commands and two flags. And I will show you now, and this, it's, it's a smoke test, so we only check that the exit code is uh, zero. That's all we do. Um, first, I want to show you how it's done with unit tests. So we have, like, you all know how it's looking like, and the green surrounded thing is our test code itself. So we have a command called config. We have flags. Um, in this case, it's verbose. And we use the click testing runner to uh, run our main entry point with a flex, with a command, and then check with a third equal that the exit code is zero. That's all we do. But I, as I said, we have th um, three commands and two flex. So how it's looking like if you want to do that with unit tests? Well, you copy-paste your test and just change your input parameters. That's what you do. So it doesn't really scale well. So how is it looking like with PyTest? With PyTest, that's what you do. You have fixtures, so you put your setup code and your tutoring code somewhere else. Because if you want to main maintain the code base and with tests, you really want to just look at the test implementation and not everything around it. And this is how it's looking like with PyTests. You use a marker called parameterize, and you can just stack them, and it will automatically permutate all the combinations. But the testing code doesn't change at all. It's still the same. So that's um, about the fundamentals of PyTests. Um, the names matter, so the test discovery, it's based on a naming convention. The fixture um, system is based on names. Hooks do need to fit uh, to a naming convention, so naming is really important in PyTests. Um, again, as I said, there is a marker called parameterize. As I've shown, what it does, it just inputs the values into the test function, whatever you want to with it. Um, when you run it in the Bose mode, you see that in the um, uh, after the test methods name, you can see the parameters, uh, how they are combined. So uh, if you want to see a failure, you exactly know which parameter combination failed. There is a fixture, um, sorry, there is a decorator called fixture, where which um, you use for like combining several setup codes to each other, but you, it also supports a params keyword argument, so you can pretty much do the same with it. Um, one of the main benefits of PyTest is that it's extensible. So if you have something in your company or your open source project that is very specific, you are free to just write a plugin for it and use it and extend PyTests. Um, it does it with, with based on hooks, so you can just um, like inject your code into what PyTest is doing. Um, and this is how it would look like. So the cookies, cookies variable, uh, sorry, fixture is just from one of uh, plugins that I maintain. And it just feels as it would be in your own code base. So you can just use it and do whatever you want to with it. Um, if you're interested, that's a PyTest plugin to test cookie cutter templates. Um, 
which is kind of handy but very, very manual. Um, and on the other hand, since I like to combine things that I like, um, there is a template to create PyTest plugins. Um, and a lot of people use it, like even Dropbox created their plugins with based on this template, which is good. Um, hooks. Um, again, this is just an example of what a hook, can, hook can, could do. Um, you can, for example, run all, only tests which use a certain fixture, which doesn't, which you can't do just out of the box, but you can write a hook that does that. Um, it's called PyTest Collection Modify Items, and there is a huge number of hooks that you can use um, to, to fit your needs. Um, just skipping over that for now. And there is also a GitHub I.O. page. It's called PyTest Tricks, and it's currently me and Bruno, a contributor from Brazil, and we try to um, provide blog posts, which are probably not worth uh, our, like a separate blog post, um, just like dumping best practices maybe, but also like tricks, so you can find advanced things which doesn't really fit into the um, documentation from PyTest itself. So I wanted to talk about new features um, in this talk, and one of which is a prox. And I think a lot of people are kind of annoyed from the scientific community that it's really hard to uh, compare floating point numbers. So there's a new method called PyTest approx. And what it does, it just asserts uh, based on uh, a precision that your values still match, which is kind of handy. There are changes regarding the yield fixture. So you may know there is a decorator called fixture, but there's also yield fixture. It allows you to run setup code, then yield into the test item, and then run the teardown code. What changes now is yield fixture um, is still in the library, but you can just use fixture for now, and PyTest will look into the test. If there is a yield, it's automatically a yield fixture. If there is a return, it's a regular fixture. So that's just convenience. There is a new thing called doc test namespace. It's a fixture, and you can add abbreviations to it from um, it's just filling a dictionary. And if you run doc test via doc test modules, this is an example. Um, apparently, in the, uh, in the NumPy code base, there seemed to be this convention of just using um, NP as an abbreviation. So what you can do, you can use the doc test namespace and um, say NP now um, points to the, uh, the module called NumPy. And if you then have a, a doc test, um, it will work just out of the box when you use this fixture on auto use. Named fixtures. Um, as, a, as again, as I said, there, it's based on names. But if you use tools like PyLint, it will complain about your PyTest tests. And the reason for that is, um, you can see that in here, in the example. So it tells us that we, the positional argument for our test item is the same as a definition of a function in the same module. So you can see the first fixture that we use is template, and we define it in the same module, and PyLint complains about this for a good reason, because we are overriding something that's in the outer scope. There is a new key keyword argument called name, and it allows you to change the, um, the, the fixture name, essentially. Um, so the, we don't really care about the, the uh, function's name anymore, but we will look into this keyword argument and match based on that. And this is, I think, one of my favorite features. Um, it's a new hook called PyTest Make Parameterize ID. Um, so this is an example of a test. Um, I try to not skip over too fast. So what it does, we define a list of class instances. Um, then we have a fixture which parameterizes these. Then there is a test. It's called Test Become a Programmer. It uh, um, receives. Uh, a person fixture, which we define via the mark parameterize marker, and the Python package from the fixture um, on top. And there is another called, uh, test called test is open source. It just uses this fixture. Um, so what you do then, if you run it, you will see in verbose mode that it just combines the fixture names, puts a suffix to it, and this is how you identify which test is actually being run. This is nice, but it's not really 
awesome, I would say. So what you can do is you can provide a keyword argument called IDs. You can use a callable um, that will be applied to the parameters to get a string as a representation, or you can do it explicitly and just pass in the strings yourself for each of the individual parameters. So if you run that, you can see now it's a, a bit more like what we want to. We can now understand what's actually happening. And this new hook, it allows you to move this logic into your conf test file or your plugins or wherever you want to. And if you have own classes and you don't want to repeat this in every single PyTest parameterized marker, this logic, you can just use this hook. It receives a config object and value, and value will be the parameter. And then you can do whatever you want to. And in this case, I decided to use emoji because emoji are cool. So if I run my tests again, this is how it looks like. Um, probably as a disclaimer, I don't think this works in the regular Windows terminal, but in iTerm it does. Um, there is a new feature that I've actually implemented. It's called fixtures per test, and this is where I'll do, be doing a live demo, and I really hope it works. So um, if you run the tests, um, whoops. Um, I use cookie cutter for that case. So it's doing a thing, everything is cool. Um, and then there is a command line fact, it's called fixtures. What it does, it analyzes the code base, like the tests, without actually running them, and it shows me where a fixture is defined, this is the test module, what's the name of the fixture, um, and it tells me in case there is no doc string that I should definitely add one. If there is one, it will actually print it here. So this is handy, but if you use the same name over again for a fixture and you define it, once it might be in a plugin, it might be in a conf test pie, you might maybe create it uh, dynamically in the mark parameters or in the test module itself, this gets quite confusing. So there is a new thing called uh, fixtures per test. So now it's collecting all the test items, um, and I should probably run that in verbose mode so you can see more information. So this is a test, a test method. It's defined in tests, version control system, test prompt delete in this, at this line. It uses a fixture called mocker, and mocker is defined in pytest mock at this line. This is the docs ring for it, and you can see that it's pretty much the same for all of the um, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's the fixture is defined in your own package again or in the plugin. Um, and I find this quite nice. So if you then, for example, have a fixture in your code base somewhere, um, so there is one here, template. So then um, I can just dump, jump to the definition and make my changes, and I know what I'm actually doing. Okay. So that's that. So I also want to address some of the backwards incompatible changes. Again, as I said, backwards incompatibility uh, is quite important for our project, but there are some, some changes that we um, thought about that we should probably do, because now with the major version, it, now it's the best time to do it. Um, one of which is there is a command line fact called assert, and what it does, it chooses you, it, or it allows you to choose a strategy how insertion errors are being handled. It accepts plain, which means it doesn't do anything, pretty much. There is rewrite, and what rewrite does, it does its extra magic using the AST to um, put more information, the introspection, into your assertion error um, message, and there used to be um, reinterpret. And this is most of the magic part that used to be in the code base. Um, what it does, it runs in plain mode, and if it encounters a failure, it reruns the same thing again, but with rewrite. So this has some very, very ugly side effects, um, which means it's since it's running the same assertion statement again, you, and if you do some heavy logic in that, it will be executed twice, which is not what you want. So we remove that, so it will be just plain and rewrite. Um, those are some other command line options that we've removed. Um, and they, like no assert and no magic, are pretty much achievable by just using the assert thing. Um, 
Then uh, a new change. Um, PyTest warning summary will be now displayed by default. So if you upgrade to the new PyTest version, you might see the, may see the warning summary in the end of your tests. We do that because we want to communicate, communicate with you when we actually deprecate things. So if we happen to deprecate some other logic in the, in the near future, we want you to see this and react on it. And if you encounter any problems, you should let us know and not, not just ignore the warnings. But if you decide this is just too annoying and you don't really want to bother, you can use the disable PyTest warnings flag to, um, you, the line will still be sh showing that you have warnings, but it won't print out the warning summary. Deprecations. Um, there used to be this thing called PyTest func arc and it allowed you to define fixtures. Um, we deprecated this and it will be removed in the ne next major release. There is this thing called get func arc value that you can use from the special request fixture. Uh, we, re we renamed that to get fixture value because it's just being more uh, telling you what it's actually doing. Um, it's taking a fixture by name and it gives you the value that it returns. Um, the other one is still in the code base, so we won't deprecate that for now. Improvements. Um, so it used to be the case that you can only have the assertion rewriting um, in, your, in your tests, but now you can also have that in plugins um, and in conf test pies. So you could have an assert statement in there and we will apply our magic to it so you can get more verbose assertion errors. Um, that caused the code base to remove a whole bunch, the assertion interpretation remove. Um, so Flores did that and um, as you can see, it's a lot of lines of code that have been removed. And it's amazing because it's, um, it's a very nasty part of the code base. Talking about documentation. Um, so I went to the Write the Docs conference last year and I can highly recommend doing it because um, I noticed that every time when I go to a conference, when people are new to a framework, they don't look at the code base to learn about things. They look into the documentation. But we as developers sometimes just not pay it enough attention to it, I would say. And I think that applies to PyTest as well. The documentation is a bit cluttered. The information is present, but it's hard to find. Um, so we sat down in the PyTest sprint that happened last uh, June and came up with a new idea. So treating it more like maybe an agile project, talking about personas. So if you're new to PyTest, and don't be scared, there will be a wall of text on the next slide. Um, that's for a beginner user. We want to focus on clear instructions, how you install PyTest, how you write a basic test with PyTest, how you run it, and it's more like a tut tutorial style of documentation. We want you to understand the core concepts of it and be familiar with how you use um, assert statements and fixtures and so on. Then we want to have a section for an advanced user, which would be more like a a lengthy blog post which goes really in depth and explains uh, more advanced uh, topics, but it could also be like cookbook style recipes, pretty much to what we do on the PyTest, uh, PyTest Tricks repository. So you get like, yeah, like nice things that you can do if you want to look into the advanced features. Then there are plugin authors, um, and what they want to know is how do you actually submit a package, a plugin to PyPy? There is this template, but it's not, we have it in the documentation, but it may not, not everyone may know it, so we want to cover that. And also, we have the PyTest dev organization, and it's, it's a place for us where we share the responsibility over um, projects that belong to this namespace. And, and we invite you to submit your plugin to this organization if, if you are willing to support also other projects. It's, it's really like this shared responsibility idea. Um, there is a, a guide for it, and uh, we want to make it more, um, yeah, more obvious how you can do that, actually. You can also be a contributor, um, and everyone is really welcome to help out. It's, we accept pull requests for typos, for all sorts of things, um, and every contribution is greatly appreciated, um, but sometimes it's not really easy how to get started. Um, uh, so there should be a dedicated section for contributors as well. Um, that's from our PyTest sprint regarding the documentation. So we figured out what our personas are, and then we looked at what the documentation has right now, put it on a post-it, and tried to put it into a section for our persona, so where it belongs and how we should handle with it. Um, at the top, you see something that 
is probably going into the sidebar of so, um, things that are uh, applicable to everyone. There is a new, um, better way to get to the documentation, and it's just docs.pytest.org. And this is just something that I wanted to um, say because I have the chance to speak here today. Um, funding open source or open source work in general is not very um, easy sometimes. Uh, it requires a lot of time and we heard yesterday also in the uh, core developers panel that even they are not, not funded. Uh, and um, as I said, we, we've been doing this PyTest sprint in June and it was based on an Indiegogo campaign. Um, and my uh, employer actually contributed or donated 500 US dollars to it. But they didn't do that just because they wanted to, but because I, as a developer, I understand how important PyTest is for our community. So I approached my line manager and he said, this is a good idea, I should definitely talk to our CTO and vice president of engineering. And they were really happy to talk about it. So I encourage you, if you understand how important open source uh, work is that you approach your managers because they don't really know about how it works. They have the money, but they don't really know how to uh, provide projects with. So community, I actually started last year. Last year here at EuroPython, I was um, engaging the first time with the PyTest core contributors. It was really nice. Um, and this is how it looked like last month. So there is a lot of people, and people came from all over the place, from Brazil, from Australia, from Germany, the UK, from everywhere, from China even. Someone was in Europe for the very first time just to spend a week with the project. And this is just amazing. Um, so funding open source is important. It's not just about writing code on the issue tracker. So people need to get together, flourish, and think about ideas, and come up with new features, like the ones that I presented earlier. We also have a blog now. It's blog.pytest.org, and you will find updates from the core team itself. Um, and there's also something called Planet PyTest, where it's just a collection of RSS uh, feeds from blogs that we know that talk a lot about PyTest. Um, and the slides for this presentation will be at Speaker Deck. Um, that's my username over there. It's not uploaded yet, but I'll definitely do so in the course of the day. And I really want to thank you for your attention and the uh, chance for me to speak here today. Thank you very much, Raphael. We have time for questions. Hey, thanks for the talk. Um, is there a place in the docs where there are do's and don't do's? Um, there are, there's a page called examples, usage inv invocations, and it kind of covers uh, best practices. But it's not like do's and don't do's. Um, we've tried to talk about this on the PyTest tricks thing. Um, a lot of projects, do something uh, like having a conf test pie, but then importing from other modules to get fixtures to be available in your code base. And this actually has very, very unwanted side effects because it duplicates fixtures and the scoping is messed up. The whole caching doesn't work as expected. So there is another way. It's called, I think, pytest underscore plugins, and it accepts a list of strings and it will import from there. But respect, caching, and scoping. But this is really hard to find. Um, so we know that, and we want to work on it. It's just a matter of time, I think, until we, until we get there. But if you have something that you are missing from the documentation, please just talk to us. Um, we really appreciate improvements to the documentation. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. First, I wanted to thank you about how the community is going because I did a talk on PyTest a couple of days ago and every single feature you are putting now in PyTest and PyTest 3 will have improved my, conference, my talk, so obviously you are doing something right. And second, well, the first, when will PyTest 3 be ready? 
And if you left something behind you wanted to put, and we'll have to wait until fall. Um, so we initially planned to release um, the new version just one week before EuroPython. Um, but as, as we discovered, there are a lot of things that are not just yet in the major release, so they haven't fully gone through the code review process. Um, so we decided it's best to not release an unfinished major release just because to make a big announcement here at the conference. So we hope to release it in the next weeks. Uh, I think it's just a bunch of pull requests that need to be merged, um, then some testing, and then it should be good to go, I think. Um, and sorry, the second question was? Uh, left something behind. I think we did a strategic, like we sat down with this whole group and talked about the features that we want to have. Um, something that, are, that we left behind. I, I, I don't really think so, but the list of features, and this is just like an excerpt from, um, if you go to the GitHub page um, and you choose the branch, we use something called a features branch, and there is a file called changelog RST. Um, and it doesn't even fit on one screen. You need to like scroll. It's uh, like it's crazy lot of features, a lot of improvements, and I skipped most of them just because I wanted to keep the timing right. Um, but there may be something that I just forgot or which is still standing in the issue tracker. Okay, we have more time for questions. Regarding the Pi package, Pi namespace that originally contained PyTest, is there anything in that um, namespace still that's maintained and you'd recommend people looking at and all that, or is it sort of a, a bygone era? Um, to be honest, I don't know. Um, I think I can definitely forward that question and announce it on Twitter or something, but that's just beyond my knowledge right now. Yeah, cool. Um, there has been work also on performance because um, I'm doing a plugin that does random stuff with uh, running tests and it can easily produce something like 100,000 tests. And the tests itself uh, are quite fast, but the build up of the uh, what to do looks, it was uh, quite slow. Mm -hmm. With Python, with Python too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there is this plugin called Xtest, which allows you to distribute your tests to different. I don't know if it's, it's threads. I don't. I don't really know. I think Holger Freco started that plugin, um, and there has been work done being done at the Pytest Sprint, because the problem is it distributes the tests, but doesn't take into account uh, parameterization, so. It may send one test with 100 parameters to one worker and another one with just one test to another one. So we effectively wait for the one that's... Um, and I think there has been work done during the sprint that actually takes parameterization into account to make it more even, like to also split the parameterized tests. Um, other than that, um, like there have been people working on performance, but it's I don't really know what the outcome was and if anything has been merged yet. We still have a few minutes left for questions. Any more? Oh, uh, there is one. Um, with the fixture split test um, mechanism, you showed it for like the entire um, test suite. Uh, can you can you l use the normal selection mechanism with like minus k and specific test files? You just look for the fixtures for one specific test. Yeah, that's what I did here. Uh, I, so I have tests um, to are marked with Euro Python. So I just run those, and you can see this is just one test, and this is another one. So out of 200 tests, I only selected two of them. So it works with the usual collection mechanism, and it allows you to use markers or passing in a file, so that works as well. Okay, last chance for beer. Questions? No? Then thank you very much. Have a great talk. <laughs>